Okay, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE. I'm John Foudier, and we are here on theCUBE with Xavier Poisson uh, in Europe, and I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante. Xavier, you are in charge of the cloud computing for EMEA, Europe, Middle East, and Africa for HP. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, good morning. Uh, uh, morning. Dave, notice I said Foudier, because yes, you know, that's the French that, yeah, version of uh, my name. So, uh, <laughs> welcome to theCUBE. So, so we've had, we, you're the first European executive we've had on uh, talking about cloud, so welcome to theCUBE. Um, obviously we're in Barcelona, big presence here. I was commenting to Dave when we were walking in today that this is a bigger event here in Europe than it was in, in Vegas. So big European presence for HP. Um, so first, share with the audience that watches uh, the dynamic, what is HP's presence in Europe like? What, what does the uh, market look like for HP? Uh, size, big, and happy customers, what's, what's Europe like for HP? Well, you know, we, we started with the cloud motion here in EMEA already three years and a half ago. Um, and uh, we started to be very, very pragmatic to build uh, the next step of our virtualization for our customers. As you know, we operate in both, uh, in both the built and the consume area overall, but we have been spending significant efforts to really bring our customers to, to come to the next step where they can, on top of reducing the cost, increase the agility, uh, and generate new business streams. And it was a motion of, uh, of uh, everything around uh, the private cloud strategy we had here in EME. We are operating um, in eight subregions, so a very, very large market from uh, Helsinki to, uh, to the Cape in, uh, in South Africa. And uh, what I would say is that everywhere, everywhere, the cloud market is taking off. It's taking off in uh, quite all the industries. It's taking off, uh, of course, in the classical ones, like the telecommunication industry, which has been uh, very, very strong uh, in putting the next generation of uh, infrastructure for cloud and software. But also, you know, we see an expand in, uh, in various verticals like finance, uh, insurance, like energy, distribution everywhere where cloud computing is not only a matter of uh, reducing the cost, I said, or increase the agility, but what is more important, creating new services in order we can increase, increase the top line or not only think about reducing the, uh, reducing the, the, the cost inside the enterprise. So cloud is obviously a phenomenon that we're all aware of and watching. Amazon is doing an amazing job. A lot of things happening in the US, certainly a little bit different market than Europe. What are the challenges in Europe? You have countries that have different requirements, right? So that's a big uh, discussion we always have uh, when we talk about cloud is, oh, the Germans want their data differently um, and different country requirements, is there a lot that you get to EU? And you, what, what, what does that look like? What is the challenge and, op and opportunity of cloud? Well, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, really amazing stuff because uh, I used to say, you know, to my customers on tour, uh, to the analysts on the press, despite all you hear, the cloud does not belong to anybody. The cloud is the son of internet. It is all about freedom. The freedom of choice, of confidence and consistency exactly where we have been putting our assets and investing heavily in developing our intellectual property. As you said it, yes, we have a different market. We have different market with uh, different laws, different regulations, and different laws about data privacy, that different laws about security, and we need to embrace that. I would say that it is a huge opportunity for HP because we have built the comprehensive strategy of HP offering in cloud about hybrid delivery. How you can combine workloads both in public clouds and in private clouds. How you can have for one customer uh, wants to make, for instance, 4,000 VMs in a test and dev. He can build it on premises and, and be compliant with the regulations and also been doing that with one of our cloud agile partner being in a kind of public cloud. So because what we have done is we have developed a comprehensive ecosystem of cloud service providers powered by HP who are delivering each in their countries some huge cloud services. And we help consistently with a program that started two years ago, all our cloud agile partners, these cloud service providers powered by HP technology to really deliver cloud services on their local market. Because what you have to understand also is that People say cloud is easy. No, it's not necessarily easy. It's, it is a transformation, it is a journey, and you have different segments of market, and you have different size of companies. And according to a, a small and medium enterprise, or to a large company, you need to address it differently. So that's a specificity on the market. We are here with Xavier Poussin, the VP of Cloud Computing in Europe. Um, 
Uh, great, great answer there. So I got I to ask you further. I mean, one of the things of hybrid cloud is the notion of flexibility. Yes. So you are essentially highlighting some of the advantages there. I got to ask you around, around um, deploying into these different countries. So what, what is the, the benefit of the cloud is, is the flexibility. What specifically does a customer have to be global an op to operate a global platform means they got to have they got to be in in worldwide what flexibility features does hybrid cloud have from hp that allows an enterprise to be global in 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 the emea market what are the features and what are you what are use cases have you seen so uh, you need to come back to some uh, a bit of technology which is uh, the orchestration layer and the capability to create a unique service catalog for one customer on two different delivery modes what is the most impressive in what hp has been building is the capability to separate the service catalog from the different delivery modes. It means that, imagine you are a very large company operating, I don't know, in the financial industry. You need to have one sole catalog of service, you build it with cloud service automation, with HP, and then you will have all your services being described, your cloud services being described in this catalog. Now, the good point is that, if you need to have your data located for some parts of your customers, let's say in country X, Y, Z, you can, execute the cloud services locally. So this is the beauty of it. And when you consider the, the, global, uh, the global regulation framework we have here in the EU, it is a, an extraordinary exit. I have one very uh, interesting example which is uh, referring to that. I would say it's an internal example. We have been launching last year a, a huge cloud for education because we identified that we need to boost the capability for enterprise to screw up unemployment. And HP has been working on that. How we can have better people going better, have a job, and make it happen. And we isolated the fact that self-entrepreneurship was key. So then we looked after how we can make it happen the right way. And it was how we can educate better the people who are launching their companies. Educating better these people in marketing, in finance, in people management, everywhere. And so we have been launching comprehensive cloud service for the planet which is based upon content that we push to the different users. Guess what? Today, this, ser this uh, cloud service is available worldwide, and you can connect to one single service catalog. But if you are a French guy, I'm French, so if I am a French guy, when I press the button, I say, I'm French, it will be executed in a cloud service provider in France. You get a croissant and a beauty. coffee with your cloud when you so. hit the French button. <laughs> no, but so you're saying, so you, you, the service cataloging allows for dynamic orchestration. Is that exactly, what you're saying? Exactly, exactly. So I want to come back to that service catalog question because when we talk to, to practitioners in our community, the majority are trying to move to that service catalog. That's, when you talk about IT transformation, that's what they're, they're, they're primarily doing. We're trying to get to a service catalog, but they say the biggest challenge that they have is aligning those sets of services from IT with the business requirement. So I wonder if you could talk about, if, is that the case in, in your region, and how is HP helping customers facilitate you that? You talk about a very, very important point. Uh, I used to say that if you want to success in a cloud computing project, you need to invest 20% of your budget in management of change. And it is exactly related to that. Not only for, for the transformation of your IT department or from the CIO leadership, it's also how the CIO becomes a broker. And he becomes a broker internally. It means he has a right to sit at the table with the CEO, the CFO, the chief marketing officer to discuss how, because he will make it happen with, let's say, an external sourcing, an internal sourcing, he will be able to deliver the right IT solution and not necessarily an internal IT solution to the business needs. It means that the CIO has to discuss with a different line of businesses more than ever to validate the fact that they have the confidence to go and source the services inside the cloud strategy he has been building. And yes, this governance, the fact that the role of the broker of the CIO is coming faster and faster is of major importance in the project. We see that in every large project here in EMEA. What about the public cloud? Uh, you see guys like Amazon putting uh, data centers in, in places like Ireland, uh, different requirements, it's not just one region, you, you described that very well up front. What about the public cloud in, in Europe, in EMEA? What's the adoption look like? How does that fit into HP strategy? So, different points. Uh, first of all, um, it is a ramping up from, I would say, the small and medium businesses to the cloud. It's not the blooming, okay? People learn, people have to learn. So, then you have the traditional big cloud service providers that we know. 
uh, the Amazon of this uh, planet, you know, the, the Google of this planet, the, the et cetera, et cetera. Now, the big difficulty these people will face here in EMEA, it is the fact that you have different rules, regulation, and for data, and for security. Uh, everybody is aware about all this NSA prism effect and so on. Now, our position is not to say to our customers, go and go to HP Public Cloud or forever, whatever. As I said it, the cloud does not belong to anybody. What we need to propose is a framework here in the EU on which we can offer, and perhaps it's a huge project, I will not uh, speak later on, but on which we are working, to be the global service catalog across the EU, bundling and having as share owners, participants, all the service providers here in the EU, all the governments, in order that they can publish all the cloud services, in order that these cloud services can be reused everywhere in the different countries. So we are not in a, in a direction of saying to our customers, go and purchase to HP, come what may. It's not the topic. We believe that we need to, to be very, very precise on the diversity. We need to be very precise on the workloads. We need to be very precise on data privacy rules and to allow all the cloud service providers here in EMEA to play their role in the economy. Don't forget one thing. I believe that cloud will have reached the real impact if it al allows the software development community to grow first and make mon more money, and it is something we need to work on. And second, an ultimate target is to solve here in the EU two points, unemployment and debt reduction. And that's a big, big area on which we as the EU cloud team are investing time. How we can really leverage all the job done by the service providers, how we can better leverage all the job done by all the governments who have been publishing some cloud services and create a kind of federation of all these services just in order that here we create more employment, here we, cre we create more debt production. So if you look at the history of the professional services business, uh, systems integration, consulting, professional services, it's very local in nature. A lot of business occurs locally. Do, is your premise that you expect to see the same type of dynamic with cloud services? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know that HP is going uh, with. We have a huge ecosystem of partners from uh, system integrators, from uh, channel partners, integrators, resellers. Um, I would say that uh, one of uh, the biggest challenge we have is to give to this ecosystem of indirect route to market the best of breed of HP in order that they can transform their own people first, but also that they can have the right tools to discuss with their customers and open to them the road to the cloud. Uh, one example, when you have um, a cloud service provider with a cloud agile partner for, from HP. So he has been powered by HP, working with HP to build his cloud capabilities. Our job is really to help this cloud service provider to distribute his cloud services everywhere in the countries, cross the EU, cross EMEA. So, we are putting a lot of efforts in working with our ecosystem of resellers in order that they can be linked with these cloud service providers, part of our cloud agile ecosystem, and they can propose to the market the cloud services who have been bid by these cloud agile partners. Why? Because here in EMEA at least, it's very important to understand that building the IT for a small and medium business is relying on my reseller is relying on the company who is near me, who has been working with me all these years to build my own IT. And I need to be educated by this partner of choice who is my reseller, reselling HP offering. And tomorrow, this reseller will perhaps propose to me, I am, I am an SMB, I've been working with him, perhaps he will not propose to me a server, a storage, but a cloud service. And this cloud service should be the one delivered by the HP Cloud Agile partners, the cloud service providers powered by HP. So we are putting a lot of money in that area. Xavier, Xavier I'm going to ask you about the European context around developers. One yes. of the things Amazon has done extremely well and, and is the blueprint for, and is the design center for 
what is everyone else in the enterprise because Amazon is the tidal wave of cloud that's hitting the beaches of the enterprise and the question is, how much of the enterprise will they take? Now we are saying they'll take a little bit, they're doing some test and dev now, there's some shadow IT as we say uh, in the US, uh, but for the most part, Amazon really isn't enterprise ready. I mean, that's my view and many others' views. So, so the challenge that we said at, the, at Amazon's reInvent in Las Vegas was, whoever can build the Amazon for the enterprise will win everything, because the enterprise needs the same philosophy. Integrated stacks, elastic beanstalk, full closed loop, provisioning, messaging, red stack, data warehousing, all in a new way, but with the focus of developers. One thing that they've done is the developers, so please share with us your view. A lot of developer action in Europe, very hot developer market. What are you doing? What's HP's developer angle in the cloud? So this is a message for all the developers. Look at HP in the coming months. Look at HP what we are going to launch as a formal proposal to the EU Commission. I can tell you we are working on a very, very big project for you, the developers, in the EU. I can tell you what we want to do is really to bring all together all the players of this industry in the EU. We believe that if we can bring together all the cloud service providers at the same table, all the government who have been building some cloud services, we can, bring, we can build a global EU service catalog on which you developers can rely on in order you can reach every single of your customers in the EU. We can do this, why? Because of cloud services automation. Because of this software that we have been creating that will enable to build a global marketplace and not a local marketplace in order that you developers can put everything on this platform even though with the HP technology and the hybrid delivery model, it can be executed locally by all the cloud service providers here in the EU. I revealed that today. It's a big announcement. We're working on that. We are just starting the project, but I can't tell you when's it the, when, when is the announcement going to come? No announcement. It's where we are working on. More okay. to come. Stay tuned. No, so you're, okay, so first of all, it's the passion is awesome. We love the passion. Um, so explain, let's, let's talk more about the developers. What kinds of developers? Because DevOps is the new way, right? Programming and pushing code, whether it's Node.js at the top of the stack, or whether it's something in, in a, on a database, unstructured, structured, I got some Vertica, I got some non-Vertica. Developers don't want to get under the hood. They just want to code, write code. So infrastructure as code is the deal. So service automation, orchestration, these are important things you've talked about. So, so what kind of developers are you targeting? What are the most relevant developers? And what are the things that you'll offer them in terms of success? Distribution, flexibility, just elaborate more on the developer. So our target is really to put the right tools in place for agile development. I am very clear about that. And you will see some announcements here. During these days, I cannot speak about that. It will be announced. Okay, watch the you will see You will see some announcement about some new tools for agile development in order that you can if I am, if I am a, a developer, you know, I need to embrace the latest technology. And there is nothing more than great that how I can make it happen collaborating with agile development. I do not believe that the next step for development is to have one developer in one area. What we see as trends here in EMEA at least is that you have Turkish people being connected with Swedish ones, being connected with, I don't know, Romanian ones, and thinking about one project and how they can really collaborate using Collaborate, the latest, yes. the yeah. latest tools. So, be stay tuned on that also because you will see some announcement about collaborative development in the cloud from HP. It is a huge focus for us and it is where we are putting so our money. So that would suggest that interoperability across cloud platforms yeah. is very important in this region. So would you agree with that, that it's maybe perhaps more important than, than the functionality of an individual cloud? How do you, well, how do you see that trade-off shaking out in this part of the world? So what, what we see is that uh, the, the workload portability needs to be there. So you have different ways to, to come to the workload portability. First of all, you can come to, to, tools, to tools like Tosca for the development of application in order that really you can embrace the, the comprehensiveness. Now, I believe that one of the big, big bets that HP has done and that is bringing to you customers, developers, is also OpenStack. Let us be clear. There is a big, big bet of HP there. We are putting, uh, if you listen to Bill Vector, if you listen to Meg Whitman, if you listen to Sargilai, if you listen to Martin Fink, we are putting the money there. Why? Because we believe that we are at, and I believe I listened to you when you were discussing the, 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 last, uh, the last 30 minutes, you know. There is a new event coming. The new era when 
some years ago, the Unix 6.5 was created, and today something is popping up, which is OpenStack. I tell you what, we have, uh, we have been instrumental. I was discussing with uh, Alan Clark from uh, OpenStack Foundation and uh, Numergy from, uh, in France, which is a G Cloud powered by HP, who has embraced already you know, the route to, to OpenStack. Yeah. And we had a press conference together. And this route to standard will be key for the achievement of what you say, the interoperability, the workload portability, on top of using, in connection with these tools, the application links with tools like Tosca, so upward, upward APIs, not only thinking of downward APIs. We are in the world of the software. Well, OpenStack is, is one we're very bullish on. We broadcast live at OpenStack Summit. We didn't go to Singapore. But OpenStack has challenges right now. One is the market's moving very, very fast. You saw what Amazon was doing at reInvent. Clearly they're moving into, the, into that area. Um, Rackspace is a great partner of OpenStack, but they're not a big player. I mean, they're, they're hardware. They're hardware guys. They're not software guys. So, so what, we're, what we're seeing is, obviously we know you guys have been great with OpenStack. Um, we, OpenStack has so much momentum and promise, and CIOs want OpenStack to win because it's a, it's a warm blanket of, in, of execution. It allows for customization. We've spoken to SAR, we've spoken to uh, George Kadifa. You know, the openness is a really good, and it fits the multi-vendor strategy of HP. So, so you know, we, 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 we are not seeing the leadership at, open, at the OpenStack level. There's a lot of little skirmishes going on, Neutron down at the SDN layer, but we need to see a leader for OpenStack. Is that going to be HP? It will be HP. It will be HP for one single reason. It is that we know how to make an enterprise scale kernel for open systems. And uh, you will see more about CloudOS in this area, in this exhibition, and new announcements coming. But we announced that already in, um, in, early, uh, in early September and, uh, and this summer. We have the proof point now. We have been very cautious. We have been taking the best of what OpenStack can deliver to transform this into a, into, um, a global set of functionalities that you can deploy in a data center. The big, big uh, advantage of uh, what we have been bringing with OpenStack is not only the fact that we have been uh, with Havana, you know, one of the main developers of OpenStack, the new version. It's because we have been able to package it. We have been able to make it Taylor, compliant flexible. with the patch, and also with the patching, with the lifecycle management. You know, you say, uh, why a CIO would say okay to, open, to OpenStack? He would say okay because it is reliable, it is scalable, but also, it has a lifecycle management. And that's what we bring with CloudOS. And uh, we, we will have some, uh, some very exciting uh, press conference tomorrow. You will see some customers of HP using CloudOS, speaking about that. I believe that we have taken the point because we are testing that. And now it's all about industrialization of OpenStack. It's all about CloudOS, how we can make it scalable for the enterprise, but not only scalable, not only rich, not only interoperability, but lifecycle management proof. Well, we're excited to hear more about that on OpenStack, and certainly we want to keep in touch with you. It's great to have you. Great interview, great passion. We're excited for the EMEA approach to the cloud. It's very That's challenging. Okay. You have your work cut out for you. Certainly here, it seems harder than the US. Um, so final question I've got to ask you. Um, there's been some recent management changes at, at HP. Um, uh, you have a new leader, uh, Martin Fink, who's been on theCUBE before, CUBE alumni. Um, what's the management structure for the cloud? Okay, so, Vecte was running it kind of before, right? So, so is SAR, SAR and uh, you report to... Um, so, so it's, what's it's the very simple, like? it's, it's very simple, you know. Uh, from a go-to-market perspective, the guy, the person, the leader who is doing that is Bill Vecte. You know, that's normal. Uh, okay. We embrace all the segments, we embrace everything. Now, from a technology perspective, so everything is connected to uh, SAR Gilai, who is, uh, was in charge to develop all the I would say the, the third dimension between the product and the segments. And we take the best of the product, we build the cloud offering, we push that from a go-to-market go to the segments. I am in charge of pushing that here in EMEA with my pre-sales, my sales organization, all these people dedicated to that. Okay. And the big change uh, for me to say is that HP has decided to have a real dedicated people to that, to increase investment on that, and it will be, it is already, but I can tell you, it is huge fun. So Martin is the boss, so SAR Yeah, reports, Martin, Martin, we saw. Reports with, uh, to, to yeah, Vectek. Yeah. So Vectek is not managing the, the, uh, the team. Martin it is, is, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's two heads, you have to go to market, and, and Martin think he's managing the, he's managing, yes, the, the global development. 
Well, thank you very much. We're excited for the HP Cloud, and we've been watching it kind of being cobbled together from back when it was just kind of like uh, the idea. In the early days, it had no support. It was just OpenStack kind of a team coming together. But to see you no. guys really pull together the cloud system, pull it all together, no. we've, been, we've, we've talked to SAR before. I think it's, you guys are doing a lot of good work. I can't wait to see the results. Certainly looks good right now. Thank you very much for sharing your passion. Thank you. And we'll look for the developer announcement. Again, it's about the developers. At the end of the day, infrastructure as code is the new era of modern computing. This is theCUBE, of course we love this. Uh, we'll be right back and uh, with more in-depth coverage here in Barcelona, Spain, for HP Discover Europe. We'll be right back after this short break. The theCUBE 